So this is Zarathustra Dramala. It um, appears twice in this big Zarathustra. It is a hymn, I think. It is Nietzsche's hymn. It is everything that Nietzsche is about condensed into this um, hymn to the eternal recurrence. <laughs> So this is, um, I mentioned the one uh, which is um, by Hildegard von Bingen. I don't know if any of you have listened to any of Hildegard's music, but there is, I mean, it's, it exists in its original form and these amazing um, kind of single female voices. Um, just, it's not plain chant in the conventional sense because it just has one note and it's just, it's just amazing. Um, this is slightly different to that, but this is called Redness of Blood, or uh, Oruga Sanguinis, uh, is the original Latin. <laughs> Oh, redness of blood. Oh, redness of blood. 
us of blood. Oh, redness of blood. Oh, redness of blood. Who has flown down from the heights? Which divinity of This is, um, this is playing really, so one of Walter Benjamin's theses on the philosophy of history, the ninth thesis, is famously based on a painting by Paul Clay, which is a, uh, it's called Anglus Novus, or, and it is interpreted by Benjamin as having this historical significance, he calls it the age of history. Um, it's a really striking picture. Um, and what I did was I took this thesis, as it were, it's quite a short piece, um, and used a technique which is associated with William Burroughs, and then it was used by David Bowie and Brian Eno in the 1970s, cut-up technique, where they would take um, poems or bits, they would write things, chop them up into pieces and then just mix them up and then do something with what came out. You can access online versions of this. So I put the ninth thesis into one of these and then played around with what came out and um, I didn't think very much about what came out but it's, yeah, I think it kind of works. And then I wrote a tune. So this is called New Angel. Towards the sun, 
Um, and uh, this is song from his long poem called The Song of the Lover and the Beloved, which is about his kind of, broadly speaking, his kind of mystical encounter with the divine. Um, and I, I called it foolishness when I turned it into a song. Um, so, yeah, that's this one. penultimate section of the Tao Te Ching, which is sort of about what a Taoist society would look like. And so I called it small country, and then I interpolated 
this funny bit in the middle and I never quite know whether it should really be there but it was me and it was what I thought at the time 30 years ago so I never got rid of it. <laughs> Listen to the radio and I just thought, 
and how these poems got to be chosen is very arbitrary. They just kind of they pop out on the pages, looking like I mean, this was with hundreds and hundreds of poems, and I had this collected edition, and some of them just kind of stand out as being way too long and impossible, and then among others, they just look a bit more like songs. But this one had a particular resonance for me because it was. Um, it's got a long title, it's called Two Blank Blank, the name is, is kind of not, not spoken, uh, on her first ascent to the summit of Helvellyn, uh, which is, some of you may know, a mountain in the Lake District. Um, I climbed that when I was um, seven with my two brothers, one of whom was six, the other of whom was nine, and, and my favourite picture of the three of us actually is, is on the top of the mountain. Um, and so it all just kind of came together. And I love the way that, I mean, I write music very, very quickly. And I write a lot with my brother and he writes words very quickly. And they either work or they don't work. And if they don't work, so be it. And it takes five minutes and uh, 10 minutes and you throw it away if it doesn't work. And somehow, cancer ego sumus, it sings, therefore we are. Where does it come from? That's the, that's the point of that, um, that way of speaking. It's, it's a mystery. And somehow the mystery, I don't know, sometimes it seems to work. And if it doesn't, it, you know, hopefully it works for other people, but certainly sometimes it works for me. And this song, yeah, I don't know where it came from, but it seems to work. Oh, 
upon thee to confess the majesty. much more polished, it's like a real album, which is kind of weird for me. Um, and some of the songs have um, other musicians on them as well, so they're, they're produced with a full band. Um, let me just check if we're still in tune. Some of them are my favourite ones, there, but um, I like this, but it's, it's also the obvious one that has to be played. Um, I have a feeling it is. Um, 
I went on a, a road trip. Um, I, well, I got the bus um, in uh, true um, Paul Simon style from New Jersey to Pittsburgh. Uh, and it was a Greyhound bus. Um, and then met a friend and we drove through New York State. And um, we didn't get into Massachusetts, but somehow, which is where Emerson obviously spent his time, but somehow that whole kind of New Englandy thing, transcendentalism thing, just, that was, it was the right time for me to be um, attracted to that. Um, and Brahma is a poem that shows um, Emerson's um, interest in, in Hinduism uh, most strikingly, and it, but at the same time captures his own kind of idea that there is this over-soul in some sense we all participate in, just what our relationship is to that, just how individual we are as individuals, I think is open to interpretation in in Emerson and more generally, um, but this is this is called Brahma.
thanks very much, Paul, for that amazing set. Immensely enjoyable. There will now be a 15-minute break-ish, so you can recharge your beer, and then we'll have some Q&A, and maybe, hopefully, one or two final songs. Thank you.